As we enter this draft, we have the flexibility to go either way. Um, so we do have, if the, if the opportunity uh, comes where that player is available, we'll take it. Um, if it's not available in that sense, we'll continue to build around and then find, you know, um, potential odds at a, a, long, a long-term solution, in addition to what we've already brought in with Sam and anybody else we acquire. Very excited to be back here, playing for my home team. You know, a lot of players don't get the privilege to do, so uh, to be playing, you know, in the purple and gold in front of the best fans in the NFL. I might not take this off for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh. The Vikings GM and Kevin O'Connell have done such a good job this offseason making some intriguing moves, especially on the defensive side of the ball, adding guys like Andrew Van Ginkle, Blake Cashman coming off a monster season, and even Jonathan Grenard, two guys of the Houston Texans who look really, really good. And in this video, I want to break down why the Vikings are doing this what's their plan and how their blueprint looks for the next couple of seasons because with these moves you can start to see you know what they're trying to do we're gonna break it all down in this video also aaron jones right hey packers fans are happy and i already know minnesota fans are happy that they're not happy right now with that being said do me a big favor and comment down below who has been your favorite signing for the vikings so far but also who do you think they need to go out and bring in before the nfl draft and we also have some breaking news in this video as well the vikings just made a trade we're gonna break that down so stay tuned for that and without any further ado let's get right into today's video Okay, so I think the first thing we need to talk about is the most recent trade. There was literally just a trade like 10 minutes ago. The Vikings are acquiring another first round pick in this year's NFL draft while trading back just a little bit, giving a future second round pick to the Houston Texans. Now, I love this trade for the Minnesota Vikings. Now, the first thing I love about it and the main thing I love about it is the fact that it opens up doors, opens up avenues and windows of opportunity for what they can do in the draft. We heard him in that quote say, listen, if the opportunity presents itself, I will make the move. I will get my guy if the opportunity presents itself. I'm not going to overpay, but I will do what I have to do. But at the end of the day, I'm okay with just building around, building the outside boundaries of this team and building from there, get our guy at a later point. Guys, not only does this open opportunity, open doors for the Vikings and uh, the GM, but it also presents them with more draft capital in the first round where you get those studs, right? So you can come out of this draft with, let's just say, a, a number one corner, a number one, uh, you know, linebacker. It doesn't really matter. I'm just saying random positions. You can come out of here with two studs in the first round, or you can trade up, use that ammo to get your starting quarterback for next season. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. I think this is a great trade either way. Now, let's real quickly talk about these three guys right here. The Minnesota Vikings made it a priority to completely overhaul this linebacker core, and they did exactly that, right? You bring in Andrew Van Ginkle, the man sitting on the right side of your screen here. This dude is a baller. We're going to talk about him in a second. They also brought in Blake Cashman, who also, from the Houston Texans, a baller, okay? But the first guy I want to talk about here is a man talking, Jonathan Grenard. This is a man who is coming off one of his best seasons. Last season with the Houston Texans had 12 and a half sacks. Was an absolute beast at getting to the quarterback, but also was reliable in stopping the run as well. In this quick little segment, we're going to break down everything you need to know about this man and his icy chain on his, on his left wrist. This is going to be a good pickup in a very underrated one. Let's talk about Jonathan Grenard. Now, I love this fit for the Minnesota Vikings because Jonathan Grenard is a beast. Now, when you look at the Vikings this offseason, they lost the Nail Hunter, right? So they needed to pick up some edge help, and this is the perfect fit. Not only is he a younger type of guy, only 26 years old, but it's coming off a monster season of 12 and a half sacks, and the year prior only had one and a half, right? So yes, he's kind of blooming, kind of looking better, and improving each and every single day. But we have seen this guy dominate at high level for a for you know pretty much the entirety of this season all 15 games he's played he looked really really good um specifically in a couple of games this season versus the jets as well and the minnesota vikings are extremely pumped to have gotten this man i mean i'm telling you right now this is going to be a solid addition the vikings last season ranked number 21 in terms of sack percentage yeah let that number go up just a little bit here with this addition 
You know, I know Daniel Hunter is going to be a tough loss, but Jonathan Gennard is just the beginning of what they're trying to do here in Minnesota. So give me a letter grade down below about this move specifically, but let's move on to another guy who I love here in Minnesota. And real quickly, before we get into why Blake Cashman is an absolute stud, perfect fit here for the Minnesota Vikings, do me a quick favor, subscribe to the channel if you're new, it is free, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, but also hit the like button, we're going to be posting so many more Vikings videos for the rest of the offseason, and if this video gets up to 200 likes, I will continue to drop non-stop coverage of the Vikings for the rest of the offseason, the draft, trades, everything you need to know, I got you guys covered, but with that being said, let's talk a little bit about Blake Cashman. And here we go, Blake Cashman to the Minnesota Vikings, a beautiful deal for not only the Vikings, but also Blake Cashman. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is he's from Minnesota, played college in Minnesota, and the man is extremely excited to be on the Minnesota Vikings, right? You heard it in his interview, he said, man, this has been my dream, my dream has been to play here in Minnesota for the Vikings, and now he is here. This is a big addition. Blake Cashman has been a guy who is coming off a career season with the Houston Texans, right? 106 tackles in just 14 games played, 56 solo, two sacks, one fumble recovery, and had an interception as well as 11 and a half run stuffs. This is a guy who can play, uh, you know, kind of, you know, a dual threat, right? He can drop back in the coverage at times, but also is one of your best tacklers on your football team from the jump, right? Not scared to take on a Derrick Henry, not scared to make those moves, and he adds to a Minnesota a team who is already one of the best run defenses in football ranking number three in yards allowed per rush number six in terms of yards allowed per game on the ground and also number 12 in rushing touchdowns allowed per game as well now this team is going to be uh, you know a force to be reckoned with in terms of you know stopping the run once again I know they lost some guys but they did do a great job bringing more guys in that can do relatively the same thing I think Blake Cashman is a huge addition to this linebacker room, but not only do you add Blake Cashman and Jonathan Grenard, you also add another baller in Andrew Van Ginkle. Let's talk about him. And then you add Andrew Van Ginkle, another one of those guys who is extremely reliable. In the last four seasons, he's missed one football game, right? Now, last season, he's coming off a pretty big year. 69 total tackles with the Miami Dolphins, 42 solo, six sacks, one forced fumble, an interception, and eight pass def uh, deflections in seven and a half run stuff. So a guy that can do everything for your football team, not only in terms of getting to the quarterback as an edge rusher, but he can drop back into his own coverage, right? We love having in the NFL these versatile guys who can do multiple different things. Usually in the NFL, you have your edge rusher and then you have your zone guy, right? And it's really tough for defenses to, you know, not be predictable because when you add your edge rusher into the game, they know you're probably setting him into a blitz and not dropping him into his own coverage. With Andrew Van Ginkle, you have no idea, right? He could drop back in his zone or he could come right at you. You never know. And unpredictability is the best thing to have in football and that's what they get in Andrew Van Ginkle right we talked about it Minnesota was ranking 21st in sack percentage this is a guy that can get to the quarterback right and he's surprising comes off the blind side and he can make forced fumbles get big time deflections this man could do it all and he's going to be a phenomenal addition alongside Jonathan Grenard and Blake Cashman and boom just like that your linebacking core looks completely different and it's probably a lot better than it was last season already and then lastly, defensively, they added Jerry Tillery. A defensive tackle can come in, maybe be a day one starter, depending on where they view him right now. But the problem with Jerry Tillery is he's just been so inconsistent over his career. Um, you know, four and a half sacks back in 2021 was probably the highlight of his year or his, of his career, right? He had his best season. And then most recently, 2023 with the Las Vegas Raiders, two sacks, a fumble recovery uh, with 31 total tackles, only 11 solo though. So we'll see what happens with Jerry Tillery. I don't think this is a completely bad pick up here for them but they definitely need to more add way more depth in the defensive line category the defensive line room with Jonathan Bullard and uh you know Harrison Phillips Jacqueline Roy uh Jerry Tillery N more depth needs to be added but specifically when you look at their run de or uh, pass defense from last season they were bad man 32 in completion percentage allowed 26 in pass attempts per game 23 in pass yards allowed per game 22 in interception percentage thrown 21 I mean they were just really really bad in terms of the sack percentage and they needed to get it better man they needed to upgrade it a ton and uh quite frankly they haven't done anything to secondary quite yet let me know in the comments down below what do you think they need to do next and who should they go and add maybe in the draft or maybe do they just need to let some guys develop because specifically 
pass defense does not look good right now and hasn't improved at all. And then let's take a look at their running offense, man. Alexander Madison and whoever else they had last season on their roster. I think Ty Chandler and a little bit of Dwayne McBride, right? This offense running the ball wise was absolutely terrible right 24 in yards per rush 28 in rush attempts per game 29 in rush yards per game 30 in touchdowns they I mean they were not comfortable running the football at all and let's be quite honest you need to have a running game if you want to win football games I mean they were nasty with Dalvin Cook however they let him go they wanted to see what Alexander Madison could do and quite frankly he did nothing but but that's where things change they do add a guy in Aaron Jones who could change this entirely Aaron Jones throw his career, if you look at the average, right, insane. He's averaging five yards per carry throughout the entirety of his career. And when you look at what they were averaging last season, it's a whole yard more. Four points, or actually a yard, or a point six yards more per carry, right? Which does add up in time, right, in theory. But five yards per carry on his career is really, really good, guys. Um, I, I think that would make them one of the best rush offenses in football if you were to do this um, and they had a sense of consistency running the football, I think he could really change the aspect of this football team. Now, we, we saw him take a major drop off in in, uh, in games played this year, had some injuries here and there. A.J. Dillon started to uh, interfere with his workload. But another thing I love about Aaron Jones is he catches the football at a high level, man. 59 catches, 395 yards, 5 touchdowns, 6 touchdowns, another 30 catches last season in 11 games, right? The man can be a two-way threat, which makes you unpredictable. And again, we talked about predictability. When you have Aaron Jones in the game, you're not this one-headed one monster where you're going to run the football every time. Yeah, no, maybe you're going to throw him a screen, right? The unpredictability is what's going to make this Green, uh, this green Bay, this uh, Minnesota team, better next season. Then we talk about Sam Darnold, man. Looks like he could be the starting quarterback for the Vikings next season. However, who knows? Maybe they go out and, and use one of these draft picks to trade up and get another guy. I mean, I think this draft class is, is kind of deep, whether they can take J.J. McCarthy or Bo Nix or Michael Penix. There are some guys I like in the tail end of the first round or the early second round uh, stages of the draft. Um, so maybe they didn't have to make that trade. Maybe they could have just been patient. Uh, with their first pick that they had originally, but I don't know, man. What do you guys think? Do you think Sam Donald couldn't be the future of this team? I mean, last season uh, didn't really play too much, but 297 yards, two touchdowns, interception, um, you know, 85 uh, Q, uh, rating, 40, 49.3 QBR. I mean, not great, right? Obviously, want to be better than that, but you no, know, he's only 26 years old, a former number three overall pick, had some potential coming out of USC. Does he still have that potential? I don't know, man. But let me know what you guys think down below. What should they do next, man? Last season, they were actually a pretty good passing team with Mike, uh, or no, Mike, with Kirk Cousins. Now Kirk Cousins in Atlanta. I think this team has a lot of decisions that need to be made, and they need to make them relatively soon. So let me know what you guys think they should do next. Subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.